In this video, we're gonna build a lotto simulator. Now, this one's specifically gonna focus on the Powerball. There's over 220 million possible combinations, so your chances of winning the Powerball are very, very slim. Um, somebody's got it, usually people win though. Uh, it all it takes is uh, one ticket. What this program's gonna do, is it's going to allow a user to input five uh, numbers followed by a Powerball number, and the computer is gonna repeatedly generate numbers, and it's gonna keep run running until you win. Once you win, it'll output your numbers, the computer numbers, so you can make sure they match, and then how many games it took for you to actually win. Uh, so, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import our random. Now this is great because it's not doing anything. The first thing we need to talk about is how for loops work. So it starts with the keyword for. I like to use I, some people use X, uh, some people use other things. In a standard for loop, I like to use I, which stands for index. So we do for whatever you would like, and then we use the keyword in range, and then we select a number. So for I in range, zero to five. But what does that do with I? Well, one of the best things to do if you don't know what something does is to run it. So when we do for I in range five, you'll notice it prints zero, one, two, three, four. It didn't print the five. So what does this five represent? It represents how many numbers you want to output if you only put one number. Another way to do it is to say, okay, we're gonna do zero comma five. If I run it again, it also does zero, one, two, three, four. If you only put in one number, it assumes you want to start at the first index, which is index zero, and you want to go to five, which is exclusive. So what if I wanted a number between two and 10? What will this output? Well, this tells the computer, I wanna start at number two, I want to end at index 10, but remember, it's exclusive, so this will output two through nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, what if you want the even numbers between two and 100? Well, we wanna put 101, because we wanna include 100. Then we enter a third number. This third number is what we call the step how much you wanna increment by each time this runs. So if we run it, it'll do two, then it will step by two, meaning it will go to three, four, then six, then eight. So it's gonna go two, three is one step. It's gonna to go to four because that is the second step and it outputs all even numbers. So that's something you may uh, need to know somewhere down the line. Now for this video, I'm simply gonna use one uh, number because it'll do everything uh, that I need it uh, to do. So now that we're uh, ready to go, we need to understand how the Powerball works. This is a lotto uh, ticket that you fill out. It's a lotto, um, I guess, entry form, if you will. Notice there are five panels, A through E. You do not have to play all five panels. Each panel costs $2. Once you fill it out, you turn, you turn it in and the cashier runs it through a lotto machine. She gives you your actual tickets. Uh, this is so you can't watch the numbers, fill this out and then say, hey, I won. So uh, if you'll notice in the top part, you pick a number between one and 69 inclusive. Notice you cannot pick the same number more than one time. So you have to pick five different numbers. No duplicates are allowed. After you pick your five numbers, you pick your Powerball number, which is between one and 26. Now the first five numbers are gonna be assembled in order. So if the person bubbles in one, then they bubble in 68, then they bubble in three, and then 66, it's gonna put it in order for them. So it's gonna put it in ascending order, so we need to make sure we do that, and then we tack on the Powerball at the end. It's very important we sort it before we ask for the Powerball number. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna say, uh, pick five numbers between one and 69 inclusive. That's all we're gonna do. And then what we need to do is we need a structure to hold these five numbers. Now I could create six variables if I wanted to, five different variables for the five numbers, and then a six variable for the Powerball, but that would make checking our numbers with the computer numbers, a complete uh, nightmare would be very tedious. So what we're gonna use is called a list. And lists are wonderful in Python. It allows you to create a dynamic um, 
data structure. This means you can add to it, you can take away from it, and a standard array, those are static. You have a fixed size to work with. With a list, it's dynamic. You can add, remove, it'll automatically adjust the index. So we're gonna call ours user nums. Now here's how you create a list. You put an equal sign, you put an open bracket, then a close bracket, and you have a list. That is as simple as it is to it. Now we need to add things to our user num. So we're gonna do for i, i stands for index, in range. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, five. I'm gonna put my colon there. Now, I'm gonna create a variable called temp num. You can do all of this in one line. I don't like to do it in one line. I like my code to be easy to read. I'm gonna get input, so I need it to specify that it's an integer. I'm gonna say enter a number between one and 69. That's all I'm gonna do. Now, once I have that stored in temp num, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my list. My list is user nums. When I wanna add to it, I'm gonna do append. And then what I'm gonna do is put something inside the parentheses. What am I appending or adding on to user nums? I'm adding on temp num, and that will add it to the list. Now, once I have my five numbers, and this will have my five numbers because it's all inside that for loop, it's gonna run five times, zero, one, two, three, and four, what I need to do now is I need to sort it. Remember, you need to sort the numbers before you get the Powerball number. Otherwise, if they pick, if the last number is higher than 26, they're never gonna win. They're never going to win because the Powerball number never goes above uh, 26. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do user nums. Now, we gotta talk about how to sort this list. You type in user nums, sort and you want to spell sort uh, correctly and just like that that will put it in ascending order once we have it sorted all we need to do is tell them to enter a number between 1 and 26 so we're going to overwrite uh, temp num again i want an integer input and then i'm going to say enter a number between 1 and 26 and that will give me my Powerball number. Because my user nums has already been sorted, all I'm gonna do is append. What does that mean? I'm gonna add it on to the very end. So I do user nums dot append, and then I'm gonna do temp num again. That will give me the Powerball number. What we need to do now is we need to make sure the numbers are showing up in order. So we're gonna do print, and here is how you print an entire list. Uh, uh, pay attention. It can be a little tricky at first. You type in the name of the list and that's it. That's all you do. That's all you do. Nothing you can't handle. So we're going to pick a number between 1 and 69. So I'm going to do 1. I'm going to do 68. I'm going to do 3. Uh, I'll do 69. I'll do uh, 4. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers and then a Powerball number and I'll do 13. Team, lucky number 13. Now, when this, this should show up in order with 13 at the end. 1, 3, 4, 68, 69, 13. It works just like the lotto registration uh, slip. Now, you can leave line uh, 19 in there if you want. It doesn't really matter. We're just doing it for testing purposes. All right, we can move on to the computer picking its numbers. So we're gonna do a Boolean value, game win. We're gonna set it equal uh, to false. Doesn't really matter what you set it to because our while uh, loop, our condition, uh, we're gonna have it set up that it doesn't matter. We also need total games. Uh, total games is gonna be set to a zero because uh, we wanna keep track of how many games did we have to play before we actually won the Powerball. Now I need to create a list for the computer numbers. So comp nums equals, and then I do that hard part of creating uh, the list. So there we go. So we can go ahead now. We want this to keep looping until we win. Uh, so a for loop is not the way to go here. Uh, we are going to have a for loop in a moment, but we have to have a preconditional loop. We have to keep running until the game wins. With a for loop, you have a starting point. You have an ending point. We have no idea. It will be impossible for us to predict exactly how many games it's going to take. Because if they enter, luckily, on the first try, and if it does, you need to run out and play the Powerball immediately, probably with those same numbers, um, it's going to keep running because you have to have a starting point and an ending point. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do while, and we're going to say not game win. Because if they haven't won the game, we want some things to happen. Now, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a for loop. So we're gonna do for i in range, and then I'm gonna do five again. It's gonna be identical, but this time, instead of having the user enter a number, I'm gonna have the computer generate a number, and I'm gonna add it to comp num. So I'm gonna do comp nums dot append. I'm gonna do random dot rand int. And that will allow me to select two numbers that are both inclusive. Because they're inclusive, I'm gonna do one and 69. Now, once that is done, I need to sort it. You have to pay close attention to your indentations here. So I'm gonna go back, so I'm outside my for loop, but inside my while loop, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do comp nums dot sort. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have it generate one more number, which will be its Powerball number. So I'm gonna do comp nums dot append. I wanna add on to the end of the sorted list. I'm gonna do that random dot rand int. And this time what I'm gonna do is one and 26. Remember, with rand int of the random library, these numbers are inclusive. They are not inclusive exclusive. Now, if you want, we can uh, print the comp nums. Um, that's gonna take a long, a lot longer. Uh, when you run your program, it's gonna look like it's not doing anything. Uh, it, it can take a while uh, to win. If you want to see the numbers uh, printing so you know it's doing something, we can do print and we can do comp num. So uh, I'll leave that up here uh, for the first uh, part. Now we're still inside our while loop. We need to exit the while loop if our numbers match up. Now there's two ways uh, we can do that. And uh, I'm gonna teach you a new way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if user nums, if it's equal to comp nums, and it will check that list, then what we wanna do is break. And what that means is it will break inside the loop it's in. Now when you look at this if statement, it is not inside this for loop. It is outside the for loop. How do I know? Because if it was inside, it would be indented. Because it's indented, it's inside this uh, while loop. So break just means you're gonna break the loop you're currently in. So that's one possibility. If not, then what I need to do is, is I need to reset the list. So I'm gonna do comp nums, and I wanna clear the list. If I don't, all we're gonna do is keep on appending numbers and numbers and numbers, and then we definitely, definitely uh, won't win. So what we're gonna do is if they, what we're gonna do here is each time this runs, we're gonna do total games plus equals uh, one. There we go. We wanna do that at the beginning because each time this runs, it's gonna play uh, the game. So we reset comp nums. Once we have that, we're good to go. I'm gonna go outside my for loop and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print, I'm gonna say total games played. Now, because that is a string, I need to put a comma. I'm gonna do total games. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print your numbers, because we wanna make sure uh, this uh, works. Now, I would suggest you do not sit at your computer and wait for it to uh, show up, because it's gonna uh, take a while. So go do something uh, fun or watch another uh, video or do something uh, you know worthwhile because this is not just going to uh, you know run uh, magically in a matter of seconds. So let's run it and we're gonna see all those numbers because of this print comp nums. So uh, we're gonna enter uh, a number, we're gonna do, uh, let's do 12, I wanna do 15, uh, 21, 44, I wanna do 57, and then for the Powerball, Mm, I'll do, let's see here, let's do 18. So I hit enter, and there's all the numbers that are being generated uh, by the computer. It hasn't matched mine yet, and it's not going to uh, for a while. If you want it to run a little faster, and it's gonna say that there was a keyboard interrupt because I stopped uh, the program, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, take this out. Um, it'll actually run a little uh, faster, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit run. I'm gonna enter those numbers again. I have no idea what numbers I entered. I think I did 12, 13, uh, I know I did 57. Maybe I did uh, 26, I don't really know. Uh, Cause I don't play uh, the Powerball, my wife does. I'm hoping she wins. Uh, she's getting better at it. She usually gets one number. And when you get one out of five numbers, uh, you win, um, you actually win, let me add it up here. Two, four, five, zero dollars. So, um, you know, and then for the uh, Powerball, I'm gonna do eight. 
13, yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it. There's my numbers, 12, 13, 26, 45, 57, and 18. So we're gonna let this run. We'll check back in and we'll see how many games did it take before we actually won the Powerball. We're gonna fast forward so this video doesn't take hours and hours and hours. All right, and there's our numbers. It finally matched a lot of numbers. We outputted both of them so we can see uh, 12, 13, 26, 45, 57 with the Powerball being 18. They finally uh, did match and uh, it took 19 million. 952,679 games uh, before we won. I felt like that was uh, pretty good. If I was to run it again, it probably would take a, a lot longer. Now you may be saying, well, 19 million times, almost 20 million here. You may be saying, well, if you play every day, but you can't play Powerball every day. It only runs twice a week. Anyway, hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if you played a lot of, hopefully this uh, didn't crush your dreams. But whether it did or not, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next Python video.